Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the regular scheduled council meeting tonight for April 18th, 2022, 6.30 p.m. Good evening to our audience, council members, and administrators. Uh, Ms. Berger, if you would call roll, please. Yes, Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Lindsay is absent. And Councilman Rogel. Here. Six members present. Thank you very much. And tonight's invocation will be done by Pastor Tim of the First United Methodist Church. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thanks for being allowed us to be here together. We pray that you will bless his name and ask your blessing for all the people who have been told to read the community and to read the world and play. We always ask you to let us be reminded softly, but clearly, that we are not only leaders, but also servants, and that it is our responsibility to serve the common good of all. Grant us the wisdom and courage to know and do what is right and do in truth. May we speak out when we time to speak out and listen patiently and receptively. We seek your help, come, and let your wisdom pour upon us. Give us clarity so that we can effectively tackle this part of today's agenda. Let us not be misguided in this meeting so that we do not lead to decisions that produce ineffective results. We bless you at the center of this. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation. Under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. The front row is always problems. I think been drinking. All right. Uh, moving on, we need to do action on the reg uh, regular minute, the minutes for the regular meeting on 4 4 22. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Mr. Cook. Um, I need to make an amendment to it. Okay. Um, Emily, you got in here that. Huh. Where did it go? Oh, you said that I, I said that I lived here since 19. Okay, where's it at? Um, eight. Last paragraph. Okay. Just, just, thank you. What would you like me to do? Since 57? Okay. Anything else? Nope. Anything else, Council? Are you ready, Ms. Brenner? Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Lindsay's absent. Councilman Roadwell. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Those minutes are accepted 6 0. Right, thank you very much. Moving on to the manager report. Good evening, Mr. Bridge. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, members of council, I'd like to share with you the city manager report. And we'll start with our police report by uh, Deputy Major Sack. Hello, Deputy Major Sack with the Clark County Sheriff's Office. I uh, just want to touch base let you know that uh, once again, there are five deputies that are out working. Uh, one thing that I wanted to point out is uh, there's other deputies that go through the city on emergency response calls and things like of that nature. And just because you see one of us at another call doesn't necessarily mean that we were that deputy that was going through the city or running lights and sirens at that time. Uh, there was an emergency call the other day and a citizen thought that we were running lights and sirens to unlock the call. And actually there was a deputy that was asking for assistance further up and they were going to that person and it wasn't us at all. So it was just careful of what you, if you just ask us, we'll be more happy to tell you that, you know, it wasn't us or it was somebody else. Uh, other than that, um, traffic stops are, are we've 
with the holiday and things, we laid off the dose just a little bit. I did anyways, but I have been giving out some warnings. Uh, but with that being said, not a whole lot more going on right now in the city. Thank you, Council. Any questions? I have one question for you, Deputy Manager Sackey, you could help me out with. Sure. Uh, what are the rules slash policies on the um, gators and, and uh, golf carts that are traveling through town that I see a lot more of here lately? Uh, one of the issues that we've uh, that we come up with is uh, we have the gators that come into town that have uh, slow-moving vehicle farm placards on them. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they're going from farm to farm or their area, that then that's okay uh, we've been seeing some more the stores and things like that um, we've addressed that with them and advised them that uh, they need to use it just for their farm business someone's got a lot of farm land here so it's hard you know if they could do a circle of the whole city and be their their area okay. pretty much uh, and as far as the uh, golf carts go they're supposed to be licensed and uh, they should be inspected and have uh, turn signals and headlights on them okay okay Great. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you, Deputy Major Sackett. Moving on with the city manager report, our fire and EMS report with Chief Trustee. Thank you, city manager. Uh, Mayor, citizens, for the month of March, the new Co-op Fire Division responded to 72 EMS calls in the city and 13 in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to nine fire-related calls in the city and two in Elizabeth Township. We had three EMS calls answered by mutual aid either by Pike Township or Bethel Clark due to Medic 52 being on a response. We answered two mutual aid calls for Pike Township and we answered three mutual aid calls for Bethel Clark. In the past uh, month or so, we've hired two new paramedics, one of them being a paramedic RN, and also we've hired two new EMTs. The two paramedics are already in the street, they're on, on the shift. The two EMTs will be on shift by the end of the month. Some questions or comments from the chief? Yeah, yeah. Sir? Chief, how's the new uh, contract working out with Elizabeth Township? New contract with Elizabeth Township is, is in full service uh, as it was written. Uh, it's working out tremendously great. All the crews are happy and satisfied. We are uh, working under the new management system, and this way the city is now protected all the time. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Redwall. I had just one for you, Chief. Um, with the old substation gone, I know that the talks were to put um, you know, asphalt over that way to extend the parking lot. What's Where are we at with that um, as far as you and the budget um, timeline? The last bid or last quote we got for the to make that into a usable parking lot for us was, if I remember right, Mr. Kiko was $43,000. $43, but just because of the depth of the asphalt and everything that would have to be for the weight of the trucks okay is that something that you're not this year's budget not this year's budget <laughs> okay um i had a thought on it i wouldn't know what council thought of it with you know that that wasn't necessarily in my opinion it wasn't necessarily the fire department's doing is want to, to remove that substation um, you know that was done pretty much without your say so on it um, would the city or council entertain the idea of uh, making a motion or, or having the city pay for that parking lot since that wasn't something that they were originally planning on out of their own personal budget? What's going on now? Uh, what, I'm, what I'm asking is I would like to see the city pay for that, pay for that uh, resurfacing or, or asphalting of that parking lot. The city would pay. Are you talking about the general fund? Right. Just, oh, oh gosh, 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 gosh. I'm sorry. Just because the you know, just because the fire department, it wasn't necessarily something that they had budgeted for in the past. It was done kind of without you know, without their say so. It was done because of you know the, the new building and moving the substation and whatnot. So you know, I know that the general fund is going well. I mean it still needs to grow, but I don't think that's a huge ask, you know. And I, I really don't want to let that sit there for a whole other year. I mean, if it's empty, let's get it paved. And make more room and make it safer for the fire department. In other words, you're advocating take it out of the general fund. Yeah, that, that's okay. my thought. Is this, that's, but I'm asking you guys. You guys. Is this going to be a uh, transfer or a general gift, or we're just doing it and write it off? I mean, I'm asking you guys. I mean, I have no problem with it. 
Let us, we're looking at the CIP, because it, it, isn't it in the CIP for this to be redone? What's that? I'm sure it's in the CIP if we're going to demo it, that we're going to have some money in there to actually pave it when it's done. Mm -hmm. So let's pull up the CIP real quick. I don't think it was put in the CIP. Okay. It was, was it? Mm -hmm. It was. It was like 11,000 to demo or 12. Yeah, the demo and then resurface. What they have last year? Nothing. Parking is pretty much a premium fire station, correct? It had to pay $20,000. You could give it to the minutes, but let's share. So we don't have anything to read here in the family. Yeah. Right, yeah. There you got it. I think you just got the winning ticket right there. He said one less lot that we have to mow. $15,000 well, it just says renovations. Oh, Fire and EMF have, they have we've budgeted 30000 for renovations that we could use towards that. And the Fire and EMS funds, which is more appropriately or needs to be expended out of anyway since it's a Fire and EMS fund. And then the general fund could gift the remaining thirteen for sure. Ultimately, it's up to you guys. If you guys want to pay for it all out of the general fund, that's, that's for you guys. But there is money set aside for that. Well, we could use. My only argument is, and I see what you're saying, is it, it's that money set aside for, yeah, general maintenance updates, whatever it may be. But that was never something that I don't think the department was actually looking to have to pay for down the road. Um, I thought we had discussions of that. It's their building, they were using it for parking, that they would pay for it. But we ended up splitting the, the city, came out where the city paid for the demo of the building, and we would pay for the parking lot. Yeah, so we, the city paid for the demo to begin with. But what he's saying is that they wouldn't be able to get to it for at least a year. I just, I'd prefer not let it set a year, my two cents, and have a general fund paper. Well, no, no, I, no, no it could happen this year. It's, it's budgeted for this year. We got 30000 for this year to be done. Oh, okay. So we just need to make up the difference out of the general fund. Now, how tight would that, how tight does that tighten your budget up? That is it? Well, it's in there for that, for general maintenance and, you know, oh, and okay. renovation okay. of the station yeah. that we can consider that. Um, and but again, also too, I think we would have to I'd Mr. Pitt go and go back and get another estimate because the estimates Time at least change. six months to eight months old. Well, another thing too is Mr. Kiko had to, had some information for you guys to share tonight about the cost of asphalt. Mm -hmm. So we can let Mr. Kiko interject now. Um, just for what I'm going to be talking to you about the overlays, um, I would hold off on that because it's not an emergency. We're paying five dollars almost in diesel fuel costs, which puts our asphalt right now at ninety. Well, what we were going to put out for estimate, and I'll get into that in my my report, ninety-five to a hundred dollars um, per ton. And last year it was seventy. So um, I think if you do it this year, you're going to pay thirty percent more for that parking lot than potentially next year. And I'm already working with the county engineer on on pricing of where we think fuel will be because it's been at fifty-five to seventy for almost twenty years. So this is an this is an outlier year. Thank you. Could you say Mr. Can we gravel it? I was gonna say is there is there a base layer we could put down the prep layer anyway for whenever it does asphalt that they could at least make it usable to drive on until asphalt prices come down? When they just wouldn't have to re asphalt re gravel it but when they go to So we asphalt? the plan is to put four inches of asphalt over eight inches of uh, crust three oh fours. If we did three oh fours up to that level um, then we're going to have to grade another two or three back off of it to pave and move that around. Or you'd have a lip and just put the original eight of 304 in, and then the asphalt would still be higher until we got to it. Is it really it is, is it, is, is it an absolute necessity? I mean, are you struggling down there with parking? I know it needs to be done right now. It's a lot. I know. I'm just saying, yeah, I mean, should right we invest in, how much is it going to cost to gravel all that just to have to go and well, chase our it? Plan, what our plan was this year was just leave it as a green space. Okay. Because? We didn't have all the funds to, and we knew that the, but Mr. Pitko was saying, we knew that the material prices were started off. But I mean, it is a bottleneck in that area, is it not? Yeah. Well, yeah, it is. I mean, if, when you start getting a lot of people who are like, other meetings there or that type of thing, then it gets, it gets probably quick. But it's always been like that because prior there was a house there. So it's not like it got worse because of the house. No, more no. Now. It's, it's, it's the same. So, 
Okay. Hmm. Why don't we go ahead and get another estimate, a more current estimate on repaving it, and see how much that be. Yeah, we, yeah, we can do that. Um, I know when he got that, and I had reviewed it, it was well before the was back when the prices were two twenty-five, two fifty a gallon, and diesel was running just under three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want a motion to do that? No, we're we had to do it anyway because of the cost of asphalt. Okay. Yeah. So we'll get we'll get those. How long do you think can you report back to them within the next before the next meeting, or do you think you're comfortable on the next meeting in May? It could take some time. These asphalt companies are in no rush. I think we when we it asked for it took us two months to get them out the last time. Yeah, and we we called three, and they're local. Okay. Mm. So give. I mean, I won't say it's going to take three, but yeah, yeah. Let us know. We called three, and we only got two that would actually show up. Okay. Give us a close. If you have it, fine. If you don't, we'll wait. Thank you, Mr. Kitko. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you ready? And Chief. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are we, are we good to move on? Yep. All right. Moving on with the city manager report, our finance report with Mrs. Harris. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, council, and members of the uh, attendance and public here tonight. Uh, the finance report is for the month of March. Our revenue for the month it was $1,158,287.72. Um, that large increase is for our first half of our property taxes that we received from the county. That was a little over half a million. Then the expenditures for the month of March is $1,036,941.13. So a total year to date on the revenue is $2,561,000. $881.04, and the expenditures are $2,231,676.38. Um, our ending statement of cash is $5,392,683.81, and the back reconciliations are all up to date. On the income tax report, I'm going to spend a little bit of uh, extra time on on the report for the month through March um, we are still up 12% 12 percent 12 and a half percent on income versus this time last year most of the revenue the highest month was February but we will have in April a, a very large amount we had quite a few um, citizens that came to the office and ask for assistance with their city income tax form. And Vicki Taylor-Witt, our tax administrator, did an excellent job on um, assisting who she could and when she could. And I think she got just about everybody, even some last minutes that came in today. She um, threw some numbers out. She helped 81 people assist them in either reviewing, checking, or even filling out the forms for them up through from March to today. And February through March, there was about another 30. So she had helped over 111 citizens this year. So as a, a reminder that we're always there to assist and the sooner they can come in and, and give her some time, she can set up appointments, the better. Uh, we get a lot at the last minute and maybe she feels like she might not be able to help everybody next year, but she did a great job. That is my finance report, and I'll entertain any questions. Council, any questions for Ms. Harris? Oh, thank you. Any questions? Motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Bond to approve the report. report. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. That's 6 0. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Harris. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Harris. And moving on to see manager report, our fine, our, I'm sorry, service report with Mr. Kitko. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, Mayor, members of council, members of the public. Uh, we'll start off under the public works department. Uh, the street department has begun dirt patching uh, all our potholes. We have made it past, uh, far enough that um, we're able to get the emulsion and get the uh, potholes done properly. If you, if you see any that, that come up, uh, it's going to take us probably a couple trips to get through and 
um, you know, get a decent job done, you can still call in those at uh, 845-3058 if you see any um, and report some. Uh, once we get near the end of the uh, street sweeping, we'll I'll start uh, working on scheduling the first sweep for the city. And then under water department, as uh, stated in the last uh, report, um, it, the, the rain has been good for us in this fact that uh, it's helping us settle that soil that's behind Adams Street uh, or behind the church there on Adams uh, so we can get final topsoil and seed. Uh, crews for the water department have been valve exercising. I've been uh, actually not so much assisting but working with them on some valves as part of our asset management, what we're required to do. You know, there's a limited amount that you have to do every year and then there's some you have to do every five years, but we're really implementing the uh, asset um, management program that we have. I uh, still have not heard anything on the infrastructure grant I'm leading that is not going to happen. We're still trying to get a definite answer. Um, but that's, uh, that's still muddy waters whenever you try to talk with the, um, the department at the state. Uh, under the uh, clarifiers, um, of course, we have one of the clarifiers that are in manufacturing and it is uh, going slow. Everything is still backed up. Um, we were slated to have midsummer, now we're somewhere we're in the fall for the one uh, clarifier. Um, don't know what else to say, but still materials and supplies are in, uh, are hard to get. We're still on track though with the OPWC grant to get the 50% coverage of the other clarifiers um, here in the future. Now to the big ones, that, and I have some discussion topics for the uh, 2022 list of roads to resurface. We had talked about, and I'd give a list of Falcon, Henry, Villa. Um, in your in your packet, you have this year's estimates, which just come out the other day. The one I laid on in front of you was last year's um, list. So just to give you an idea of what the pricing was, Villa, which was one of the ones that we were planning on doing, this year's estimate is at ninety thousand five. So I'm just rounding the numbers. So ninety thousand five hundred. Last year's Villa price was fifty thousand eight. So that tells you the difference in asphalt prices and um, the few other things that have went up you know, that go into the estimate. The other one is Falcon. Falcon last year was 41000 Falcon this year is 58500 dollars So um, uh, talking with the county engineer and a, and a few others around the area, some are actually what they had planned to do for asphalt work have decided to not do it because of the 30% increase in the asphalt and it potentially going back down. I think it's uh, you know, quite uh, the, the change in price to move um, this year. We do have about 140 some thousand and we had that opportunity to use a little bit of our ARPA funds. If I needed to round up, I would just take a little bit of ARPA funds just to get us that extra street or if I needed to tie it in. Um, it just doesn't seem logical, and, and, I, and I'm kind of good either way, but I, want, I talked to Mr. Bridge today. We wanted to discuss it with council on the streets. Is there a possibility to go ahead and move forward, pay the additional, and only do one street, maybe with the cul-de-sacs, uh, or try to tie two of them together, or um, do like a few others and maybe pause this year, take this year's funds, because it just sits here. We don't use it for anything else and add it to next year's um, street levy funds and then again hope that that price has come down and we can you know get a lot more bang for our buck so the, I, I had full print for discussion on this one i don't like spending the next hundred thousand right Mr. Kitko, are we going to take, uh, for example, on Villa, where we've got the uh, pumping up due to the garbage truck, are we going to go all the way down and re replace that base? So the base is fine, but, but we didn't take out some of the asphalt like what we found on Washington. We did some cuts, um, and we did find a soft spot that I got to repair on West Washington. So in this one, there is a hair more to do that edge, and we were going to take off some scratch to compensate for that deeper cut on that edge. 
and uh, do that. So yes, um, most of Villa is in decent shape, but what we, the engineer and I did see that is it's just worn down. So not the place where the gutter has raised a little bit. We have some repairs. It's the places where the gutter looks great, but the asphalt's almost an inch and a half, an inch low. It's more that thin. The trash trucks, it, which did not squish that up, it's actually just not there. Yeah. So we're actually filling in places where we don't even have to mill. Um, so a little bit of that is built in there, but yes, some of those spots where we see a little bit of that gutter moving, um, we're, we'll do some repairs on that as well. I would have no problem in whatever his recommendation is if we decide to hold off on next year uh, based upon the amount of money that uh, this rate increase is going to cost us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Did you have anything else, Mr. Grant? Uh, I would to hang loose at least till we see if prices come down a little bit. I know I have a few people, you know, yelling at me that, you know, I was working with, but, you know, I think this is kind of out of our hands to uh, waste, you know, about a hundred thousand dollars just to put it in. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Kicker, what's the what's the um, percentage or cost? I mean, it depends on the the width and the length of the road. But like, how much does the milling cost compared to the asphalt? Like, what's the? I didn't bring the breakdown of each one, but it's somewhere around like a dollar fifty, I think, per square yard to three dollars per square yard. I I can't really remember. It's in the. Um, Give me just a moment here. I think where I would. That's all right. What I'm asking is, what I want to ask, and I know I've asked you this in the past, and I can't remember what you said. Was is it better to mill it twice? I mean, I know that adds an expense, but mill twice to go lower to give to get rid of maybe some crack. I, I don't know. Yeah, milling doesn't change price and depth. It's by square yard, so it's not by the cubic um, depth. Right. Now, what yeah. I'm saying is if you milled the whole street twice to go lower to maybe get past some of the surface cracks, it may not get with the first pass. Um, would, would it give you a better resurface job in the end? Sometimes, yes. But if we were to do a full mill you're, to get rid of cracks, you'll pull everything up. Okay. You'll, you'll remove all the asphalt. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, let's see. It's okay. Oh, you can look it up. I was just, that, that was what I wanted to know. Would you have a better resurface job? If you milled it a little bit lower with a little bit more cost as well, I would assume. Um, yeah, the cost really is it's it's by the square foot and they usually use a seven foot head. So if we only we only mill the side and we don't even touch the center. The center in about five to eight feet out on each side of the crown um, stays full thickness as it is. We add a scratch coat to it to give it more crown and then it gets another inch over it. So we actually are probably getting it from about that two, two and a half okay. to four inches to where it should be. Okay. Um, actually, I can give you, um, so planing, um, so yeah, it's $95 for your intermediate course per ton and $100 for your surface course per ton. And of course that's um, compared to last year was 70. And we didn't get an asphalt company to do it last year. It was someone who subcontracted asphalt. And then, um, so I'm at uh, two dollars a um, a square for for milling. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions on the road resurfacing? <coughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. These are just for resurfacing. Yes. Streets like Leatherwood and Drake. Those, those are all like, part of More like we did with Prentice and Galewood. Yes. Um, as a matter of fact, the CDBG applications are out right now um, to put in. We will be putting in for a CDBG um, critical infrastructure one again. We've been averaging 375000 on our engineer's estimates. My guess is going to go over four. We have been a prime candidate, and we're looking at Fenwick phase two, so then that will finish all of Fenwick. And then we'll be down to Rawson and Drake is the only ones we have left in the Northwoods. And then we'll hit the ones that you're talking about in Leatherwood. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Hopefully. It's, it's getting more competitive. We've been pretty fortunate, but it's getting more competitive. Yeah. Thanks, Mr. Long, what's the life cycle on the paving? So full reconstruct has got a life expectancy of 30. 30 plus if you, um, you want to mill and fill it down the road with a skim. 
Um, if you use some sort of a soybean coating or an oil base, it's like an emulsion clear, and you seal them, um, that can add another 10 years down the road. You usually try to do that after the five years of a new street, um, have them come in and spray it. Um, but you can get it over 30. Overlays usually are that 15 to 20, depending on what was underneath. I can tell you on a project before I took this job on Brookfield. Oh, God. Depart from Brookfield from about Ooh. Prentice to um, uh, Bayberry was a CDBG project. It was milled to the um, sub base or to the base, and you see what it looks like compared to the overlay. And we still have some adjustments to do that. Overlay has almost been in as long. It looks better. We have a manhole that we got to do some repairs, but it is in better shape than the CDBG project project of that. But then again, some of the reconstructions weren't as good as what they are now. So you look at print, um, Garfield, for oh not for what Garfield and um, Flora, all those that have been in now over 15 years, they you know they have their hairline cracks. But. Do we have? a rotating plan as far as we know X amount of miles of streets that we have, we know the life expectancy, we know the approximate cost, we know every year we're going to do three miles of street and this is going to be the next three and then the next, in the rotation of the life cycle or whatever. So in our um, capital asset tracking that we just did, it lists all the streets, their life expectancy, the ones we've overlaid in the years they're in there. I do have mileage. Ours comes down to funding, so that it's just we don't have the ability to put in in a head in the CIP to say for sure this is what we're going to do each year. So it comes down to what the street levy and maybe what little bit we can pull in from ARPA funds or OPWC things like that. Okay. Thanks. Anyone else on streets? Thank you, sir. Oh yeah. Uh, so we're going to request a motion to council if you guys want to hold off on those repairs for this year. All of them? That was the consent. This yeah. is the overlay. You the mean overlay. Just, this would just be the countywide overlay where the ones you see in front of you for the Villa Henry Falcon, it'd be those those type of streets. So all the ones on this list in the packet? Yeah, the ones in the list, because Richard Court and Terra Court, one of them will go with Henry, one of them will go with Villa. So you have to add that price in for that because we just won't go buy it and not do the call to sack. If you're still, you know, wanting to do one of them and, and I pick the worst, you know, so be it. But I'm thinking that the prices are, my view is to hold off and we'll keep the repairs going with some minor repairs till next year and then go out for our estimates again and, you know, hopefully with two years. Because we did this when we initially did the street levy. Mm -hmm. I think we held off two, if not three years, and then did a huge mm -hmm. overlay. Which one's the worst out of these ones on your current list? Um, Falcon. What's that? Falcon. Uh, no, actually, uh, Henry, part of it, and Villa, the part where the curb and gutter is our issue, those are the soft ones. Actually, Falcon is a little rough, but it drains. It does not have sinkholes. It doesn't have a soft spot. It's just rough. So if we held, if we held off on all these projects, and then next year, Depending on, well, I mean, something would get done next year, we have to, but then we'd also be looking at Main Street getting resurfaced too by the state, correct? Main Street is getting done, yeah, in spring of uh, 23. 23, so we'd be getting one big swipe again, which would be kind of nice. So. And you guys have done really good in the past, what, how many years in a row now we've done streets every single yeah. year? I mean, we still got catch up to do, but sure, we're making sure. big, big. Mm -hmm. And it's justifiable given the cost of the asphalt, it truly is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Council, what would you like to do? I would move that we hold off until the price of asphalt comes down. Second. And then revisit the Second. Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Ms. Eggleston to hold off to uh, asphalt lowers. Okay. Councilman Redwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. That passes 6 0. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much. The last thing I have on my report for um, discussion was to 
I met with Burgess and Eiple. We got funds from the Springfield Clark County TCC to do a task order to inventory the curbs and ADA ramps along State Route 235. And I got a ton of uh, paperwork, but just to break it down basic, there's 2,962 linear feet of curb between basically Waterdog and Galewood. Both sides, that's total linear foot. How many? Uh, 2,962 linear feet. And then in our report, it breaks it down in between each block. So Washington to Jackson, Jackson to Lincoln, Lincoln, you know, and so on. So basically, full assessment, we replace every um, curb from what they're gathering right now would be approximately approximately $127,000 to hit the full assessment of the curb. So basically, um, they would take all of the linear feet and just replace the curb along all of it. Now that is not counting some of the places where there's the um, decorative brick alongside. That is almost $15 per foot more to do that curb along by the church, CVS, private. So um, I haven't really broke, broke it down much, but just to give you some easy numbers, about 127 is what they're basing all the curb to be done. 93,000 would be a little less of the curb getting done. 83,000 would be getting pretty much more than the worst ones. And then there's no depressed curb areas. And then just to get the absolute worst curbs that you know you see like in front of the church and a few of those places would be about fifty thousand to do a, approximately like eleven hundred feet of curb. And then add the decorative brick because we know that's where the worst curb is. So then about another fifteen dollars per foot. So take about eleven, twelve hundred dollars and add it times fifteen. So that would go on top of that fifty, fifty one thousand. So the 127,000 that included all, does that include the, the decorative areas by the church and CVS? That includes the curb, yes, but it does not include the increased price. We would have to add a price on there for restoration of the decorative brick for the streetscape. Brick. Oh, for the brick, not for the, okay. I yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, there's an additional cost compared to doing it next to dirt as compared to have to pull the sand out, the brick out, okay. and get to the backside. But 127 would do it all. That's their estimate right now. Um, the asphalt that they got on there, um, they have about 9,000 in as, uh, asphalt, but I don't know. I'm always for adding 10 or 15% in contingency. Okay. It's, companies are super busy right now, and they're gonna, they're, gonna bump, they're gonna bump their bid price up just because they know they're busy, and if you wanna pay it, they're gonna do it. Okay. So I think we're somewhere right around um, 60 to 75,000 would definitely get our worst curb in a worst case scenario. Okay. Is what I'm feeling right now, getting all the broken stuff. So when do we need to have a decision on this? The goal is to have all this curb work done, whatever we do, prior to next spring. Okay. Um, and along with that is the 88 ramps. That was the other thing that was inventory. There's a few on here I think I'll definitely get waivers on, but they only passed five of our ramps, even though we know we had eight just rebuilt in October. <laughs> Jeez. It, ODOT's, ODOT's specs are a hair stricter than ADA's guidelines to give the contractor a little bit of a benefit to, to meet it. But anyway, um, we have obviously no ADA ramps from Madison South. We have zero. The ones we have from Jefferson all the way up to Galewood were done from 2007 on up. I think I can get waivers on most. The only part that some of them failed is you're not allowed to use brick pavers as the truncated domes, the red part. They have to be poly now. That is the only difference. Same size dome, same dimensions, everything just got to be poly now. So if I can't get a waiver on them, then I'm going to have to just rip the brick portion out and put the new poly and dome. And it's that okay. one piece that goes in? Yes. It's got the little bumps on it? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna try to get a waiver on there, but right now if I had to replace everything, they're estimating about 91,000 to do all new ADA ramps and uh, get the ones that don't comply, get them off the code. Okay. So we were looking at some ARPA funds to do curb work and um, a little bit to do, uh, well, the ramps portion is coming from the state highway funds, a lot of it. 
On the curbs, honestly, I'm torn because a lot of this on Main Street is going to be businesses. Say it again. Has, uh, businesses, CVS is, you know, the church, you know. So what I'm trying to figure out now, can we use, if we use ARPA funds to do the curbs, I don't think we'll be able to assess these people because the whole point of the ARPA funds is probably to reduce money. But we'll get with Colleen about that because she's been on the rules with that. But there's still options for that. But, you know, if the city would front that, we'd have to assess them to get our money back, which is really the way it should be done. Okay. Is this something you're, I mean, this is obviously your area, Mr. Kiko. I mean, do you want any feedback from us as far as, you know, should we? You want us going up and getting our own personal opinions on these curbs and giving it back to you or what? I could tell you that uh, we just, we would not be able to afford the full curb replacement. But if we wanted to get everything that's unsightly, then I really don't, honestly. I just think getting everything unsightly taken care of, you know, going to putting a scope together and putting it out uh, to get some people to come in and give me some prices. Okay. Um, I think getting the, the bad, the bad spots done would, would be big. And a lot of the places where he put is where the asphalt is like down near Water Dog. Mm -hmm. The curb is in good shape, but the asphalt comes up all but that. Yeah. It's still holding together. Okay. Council, any questions or feedback on that? That's it. When was the, when was, one question real quick. When was the last time the curbs were done? 19. 50 something when they did the concrete base. I think I have a picture of it, but I think it's the 50s is when it was, because it, it was all monolithically poured. Okay. They didn't do the gutter and curb by itself and then do a concrete base. It's all, you'll see a seam, but it was all done in one. There's rebar all through it. So the goal would be to rip the whole 235 out and go with 304 base and then asphalt. Much easier to repair and do curb and gutter work. Is there any bad sections of on the street, I mean underneath where the concrete is that's gonna need repair before they relay over top of it? All of it. Okay. I'm honest, I'm being honest <laughs> with you. There's nothing to it spalls. The worst part was down by Water Dog. Yeah. And that is almost twelve inches thick there, and we still get a hairline crack coming through because of the groundwater that runs from the parking lot. We capture a lot of it, but a lot of it's running up down there by the um, by the creek. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Council, any other questions on streets? Yeah. All right. Could you finish with your report? Yes, sir. All right. I just had a couple of things I was going to ask you with. I know I mentioned to you when I'd seen you out and about a while back, and especially since we've got a, a handful of new council members that have never done it uh, at your guys' convenience, and I would like to take part as well. Is sometime if we can set up a time for, uh, or sometimes you could set up for us to do some tours of the water plant and the waste plant. If you've never been through it, uh, it's a really interesting process and it can be great for some of you who haven't been through it to check it out. So just, you know, whatever you get. We just plan it. It would be about an hour for each facility, you know, by the time you get the whole description and everything. So about an hour for each facility. We're there from, you know, 7 to 3.30, but typically from about 9 a.m. to about uh, 2, because usually after that we're, you know, clearing things up for the day. They're doing some other stuff. So... The best time is usually between at nine and, or maybe you know, around, just before lunch, or maybe just after lunch. But we're, I mean, we're pretty open to go through any time. So you just want them to get with Mr. Bridge to set it up, or do you want to send out a? Do you, I say you want to send out just a couple of hard dates, one or two. That way we can just narrow it down. No, 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 no. I, um, I think honestly, if you just email me and said, "Hey, um, here's some days I can go," it's easier to work that way because I can be flexible with what what's going on there and. Yeah. Yeah. I just retoured the wastewater plant last week and it was very interesting again. Yeah. Very complex, but highly intriguing process. I mean, if two or, you know, two or three want to say, hey, we're all good this time, and then you send it out as a group, I'm good with that. Okay. So then I'll do two, two or three. Yeah. Okay. So we're good. All right. And then, um, did you have something to say this week? No. Okay. And then moving into uh, the former season, I know the pools, you guys are going to be starting to work on the pool. Well, what's going on with that? Are we doing um, what we need? I think we're starting like May 15th um, to start working on the pool. Are we doing any maintenance? Are we doing fill? <laughs> no. Um, we got some minor maintenance to do. We're going to do a quick cleaning. We don't think we're going to have to paint just by what I saw three, about two or three weeks ago when I was looking at the surface. We're going to have to acid etch it, wash it, do that whole thing. Um, 
that that's kind of up in the air. But if it keeps doing what it's doing right now, we're not going to get time to do anything. To be honest with you, okay. right now we were already in the pool last year at this time, already scrubbing, already doing that because we had some nice days. And right now the nice days are happening on the weekends. All right. So you're saying you can come in on Saturday, <laughs> Randy? He's salary. He can do all he wants. So. <laughs> all right. no. That's all I had. Thank you, Mr. Kitko. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mr. Robo. Howie, have we have, have we looked into any more of adding a second gazebo or anything at the pool at the old racquetball court? We I know, I know we discussed yeah. it last year. Save we did it, save it for a, CIP discussions for this year. That's all we can do. do what? Save it for the next year's CIP discussions. The okay. CIP is already done. Yeah, trying trying to figure out the grant, the ODNR grant that came up later. We're trying to see what we could do. That would be over two thousand. We'd have to go to CIP, though, right? If yeah, sure. if, if we were to even try to get the grant right. Mm -hmm. okay. But that's an option. We're we're throwing it out there. What what's a, a big benefit with the ODNR? And it's just it's kind of up in the air right now. I'm glad you mentioned that because I forgot. Where where are we at on the timeline wise? I forget where we're at with the liner. What happened? What was going on with that? With who? The liner. The liner was in the CIP again. Right. So the question is, uh, we're gonna have a discussion with you. Soon enough, it was, do we need to do the liner or not? Because it seems like the pool's retaining water now. So the whole point of the liner is to do with the leak, right? So the the big part of it was the leak. We have it set in there, and we went down to I, I, don't quote me. It was three or four thousand a day. Oh, that was amazing. Whatever yeah. he did, it was. So the key is now, if you've got the two amounts sitting there, um, I'm hesitant because the guy that I talk to all the time with this liner is not. I'm not saying it's not his fault. But that deep end is very critical and of being dry and 100 percent intact when they do this and we're trying to figure out how we can do that okay. so it's it's a questionable area the rest of it there's not a question to get here or anything like that but yeah but when the when the leaks come way down because of um the chief coming in and um scubing the water and putting that stuff in that help oh, yeah. is it going to get two three four five years that would be the hope so we can say hey we got the water stop can you do this job the right way mm -hmm. okay thank you anyone else Um, I'm sorry, that's, that's no, all I got. No, I'm good. I think I got everything covered. Yeah, all right. Anyone else? All right, thank you very much, Mr. Kitko. Back to you, Mr. Bridge. So we have 40000 in the pool CIP. So if it's a ODNR grant for that, we can amend that to just line, like switch some of that out. Because um, I don't think, depending on how the liner comes out, if we don't need it, there's going to be a lot of money to work with in that CIP. But we don't have to reallocate any funds. We could use the existing fund that's already budgeted just for something else. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And moving on to the city manager reports, uh, our planning report with Derek Hutchinson. Mayor, council, citizens, <clears throat> I'm going to try to keep it short, try to keep about an hour, okay? Bear, bear with me. Uh, code compliance, uh, we had 73 identified uh, to date uh, violations, 147 uh, violation or code activities. Zoning year to date, 32 received zoning applications. I think it's 35 now since I've done this report. Um, four board of zoning uh, appeal cases this year. Uh, currently don't have anything <coughs> pending. Uh, we had four uh, planning board case reviews. Uh, the next planning board meeting is tomorrow night. We have uh, one commercial site plan review uh, for a, a veterinarian on church and uh, a discussion with the community garden uh, group. Uh, planning board currently discussing uh, reviewing the proposed ordinance related to the community gardens. Uh, economic development, community development, uh, residential developments, uh, DDC management is currently uh, starting the annexation process for development west of Scarf Road. Uh, city also met with Arbor Homes to discuss the potential development north of Northwood subdivision. That's uh, west of Addison, New Carlisle. Uh, we're anticipating site plan uh, for that soon. Uh, commercial development, we had two new businesses apply for occupancy. 
uh, 201 North Church Street, that's Windreach Veterinarian Services. Uh, they're still in process of a renovation of that building on the inside. Uh, they also will be at the planning board tomorrow night. Uh, they're expanding the parking lot, going to add an entrance onto Church Street uh, and have a one way. So the pool underneath their awning that they have on that building, you pull through and exit out on um, onto Church. Uh, also, 135 South Main Street, uh, that's going to be Studio 235 Arts and Crafts Studio. Uh, I, I've talked to this business owner. Uh, she's great. She's super excited. It, it sounds pretty neat. So it's uh, uh, basically you could have host parties uh, and they'll do different classes and stuff there. So arts and crafts stuff. Uh, they got all the different little uh, uh, stations set up for it. Uh, she has a Facebook page you can visit for uh, uh, for uh, times and, and everything. She's hoping for I think the next week or two for our grand opening. So um, look look out for that. Uh, building owners uh, at 104, 106 South uh, Main Street. Uh, last time I brought that up, uh, they have found an occupancy for 106, the smaller uh, section. 104, which is the largest space at, at 1,500 square feet, they are still looking for an occupancy there. Uh, for a tenant, so uh, still on the lookout for, for someone to fill that space. Um, I did, since this, since this report also, uh, the old record store, the music store, uh, potentially has a client going in that. Uh, I don't have all the details. I was just told by the building owner that uh, it potentially has someone there. So, uh, yeah. so we're filling up some of the uh, downtown uh, storefronts. Uh, economic development websites in development. Um, this is going to be a really cool tool for uh, our existing businesses, small businesses, new or uh, uh, potential businesses to come to to get uh, different resources, some information on the city. Um, so that will be basically just be a link off of our website to get kind of its own little sub website. Uh, DC Flying Event, I attended this uh, April 5th through 7th. It was hosted, uh, it's, uh, they do this annually since 1984, hosted by the Dayton uh, Development Coalition. It's in Washington, DC. Um, had a pretty good time. Never been to DC before, so that was that was pretty cool to see. It rained the entire time, so I uh, didn't get too much sightseeing then. Um, they wanted me to stay, but I said no. I've got stuff to do in New Carolina, so I, I came back. But uh, it was pretty cool. I got to hang with uh, and, and have lots of discussions and uh, with uh, all the Dayton area city man. There have there were city managers, commissioners, uh, council people. Uh, we had uh, senator, we had uh, state representatives there, then we had big, uh, large uh, construction companies, uh, a lot of the big businesses in Dayton, their CEOs, a lot of the bank uh, representatives were there. Uh, so it was cool to he see what's going on in the other places and kind of trade stories and, and, and uh, successes and, and strategies and, and uh, made a lot of connections. So I've got uh, a lot of people to reach out to uh, for, for some good help. Uh, CHIP program, we uh, was taking applications up until Friday, this past Friday. Uh, approximately 15 applications countywide. Most of them were from the New Carlisle area. Uh, we did get a few over the weekend that came in on Friday since we were close, so the, that number might be a little bit higher. Um, so right now, basically, is in the review process. So uh, uh, we have uh, subbed out uh, some of the programs to firms that's going to uh, administer those and then uh, some of those we will be administering as well so uh, excited for the response we got for that and um, hopefully we get a lot of citizens help for that uh, cdbg community development allocation grant um, last year we was awarded this to clark county and this is what took down uh, the old madison school uh, so it is coming up again for the 2022 which will be funds available end of year or next year um, so kind of kicking this uh, an idea around for this, for some of the activities uh, that we could use this for, um, <coughs> park and recreation uh, upgrades, uh, equipment install repaired, restroom facilities, linear feet, fencing, walkways, kind of looking at some of our needs and, and this would definitely be something I'd like to bring to the park rec board uh, for them to review as well. Um, initial thought would be, New Car uh, Carlisle Park off of North Church Street and Scott there. Uh, potential improvements could be uh, we could put some walkways in there, uh, potentially even a small parking lot, uh, rehab the basketball court needs rehab, um, some adding some additional playground equipment, or possibly 
possibly making that the dog park location or even the maybe a veterans memorial uh, area because there's, there's a lot of land to that parcel that or that park that's not being used so those are just some ideas that we could look at um, application is due may 6th so we have a little time um, but um, it'd be kind of nice to see kind of maybe a direction from you all where you might want to see that and like I said, I'll get with the parks board and, and kind of get their, their input on it too. But uh, um, speaking to uh, Clark County's grant administer, and you know, not every one of the townships, this excludes Springfield, so this is where the only city and the rest of them are all the townships. Uh, not everyone submits stuff for this, and then some of them submit big projects. Their only total is 215,000. Um, now that doesn't mean that we have to apply for the whole 215,000. Um, but if we submitted something, especially like a park related thing, they built the odds would be pretty good. Um, now, obviously, we wouldn't submit for $215,000, but uh, we'd have a better chance of getting a, a good chunk of that for a park project. Uh, that's, uh, that's just some ideas. Uh, always looking for volunteers for, um, uh, for BZA uh, or volunteers for uh, an assistant. Uh, kind of a, a building group to help uh, assistant uh, residents in need. Um, tool Lending Center is up and running still. Uh, grass season is, is here. People need to mow. Um, and if you don't have a mower, we have mowers for you for free that you can use. And if yours break down and need one, just come by and, and let us know. So that's all I got. All right, thank you, Mr. Hutchinson. Mr. Robo, did you have something? Yeah, um, Mr. Hutchinson, on the, uh, on the Scott Street Park, yeah. What is the odds of us getting that privacy fence taken down by the Dollar General parking lot? Well, I mean, there's, that would open up that park. I mean, no one, you can't see it unless you're going down the backs. Sure. Back. So, I mean, it, that fence is theirs. I mean, so we would, you know, we obviously have to work with that property owner. Um, we also have an abandoned uh, house right there on the Scott Street, the main entrance where mm -hmm. we have the, mm -hmm. uh, that house is going to be on my demo list uh, this spring. So that is going to open the possibility that you know maybe we can even uh, obtain that you know that parcel um and make even a bigger grander entrance or possibly even put a small parking lot there um, but, but i think if, if if it's visible from main street you know more people i think if if we're going to put the money into it sure i would yeah. like to look at at least having maybe some sort of entrance right there yeah and, um, and that would be tough just because it's not a public yeah. it's not a public entrance there it's not our property so um, that would definitely have to be something worked out with the property owner. I mean, it's not definitely, it's not. Well, I see the property is up for sale, so. Mm -hmm. No, well, not now. Well, no, there's a, I, one of the building, one of the series. I think it's, I'm not 100% sure. I was contacted by the realtor that there's a, something, one of them's for lease. I would imagine it's probably. Oh, okay. I heard something. So, yeah. I don't, I don't know. Hmm. So. But that's, uh, that's that's all I got for that. And you said that's due May sixth. May sixth for that. So we only have like the only meeting we have is May second. Like, where's what's council's like? Maybe just first first opinion on that. Especially like, if is, is is another park we want to update and maintain? Oh, you I guys want to see go somewhere else? I know you had something about a <laughs> a ball field there. I don't know if it would fit, but I mean, I don't know. I mean, Haddock's Field. I mean, and and this is kind of. For everyone who doesn't know, I sit on the board for the baseball association. Mm -hmm. So, um, and and we're we're self-sufficient. I mean, we pay for every upgrade that goes in there, minus some gravel. How he tends to dump for us for the parking lot, but every upgrade on that park is done through signups, donations, concession stand sales. Um, so, I mean, if there was any way we could look at upgrading some of the Haddock's field, um, you know. You have some drainage issues, um, some of the fields. I mean, you drive by them now, mm -hmm. uh, some of them look like ponds, um, no matter how much dirt and top, top fill we put on it. Yeah. Um, the fencing. Yeah, so that's definitely part of me. Yeah, I mean, it's a city, it's a city park. Yeah. So. Well, we're going to look at the lease. Isn't the lease put that all on you guys, though? All the repair. I've never signed the lease, so I've never read it. Yeah, so there's you send a. Send me the yeah. lease, and well, I, if it, it does, through. I will sign it again, and we'll just turn no, it back goes over through. to you guys. Um, it goes through um let you guys mow all that land and <laughs> drag the field i my initial thought was was for like a, you know we had we had once talked about uh nice to have a memorial or a veteran oh, absolutely. Memorial. um i just i'm thinking what's the biggest pop that's going to stand out that's going to have them select our 
project. It's something like that, definitely. But I know, you know, this, well, at least that park's not a, you know, it's not a main street park. It's, you know, you have to go back into a plant to see it. So I don't, I don't know if, if we want to hold out that we get to maybe someday have a more mainstream, you know, site for, for our memorial park. But, mm -hmm. um, but I, I think any type of park project is going to stand out because most of my, I, most of these projects are probably going to be, um, well, and he, I mean, project just, you know, uh, speaking on the ball, I mean, we, you know, we got 370 kids this year. Mm. Um, you know, every year we've grown our participation and um, we're pulling kids from neighboring cities that have come here, saw how good the park is. Yeah. Um, you know, we've basically put in and out of business. Now they, Tim, I don't know if you saw where the village and the township bought 80 acres to develop a sports complex. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Yep. Well, that's definitely yep, that's an idea. Yep. Can that money be split between the two? Well, it'd be it would be considered two separate projects then. Okay. Hmm. But I, I would hate I want to apply for something. I'd hate just to sit by and let the money go by. So as long as we have something, you know, that everyone like to see. You know. I mean, I think New Carolina Park does need some definite, some definite updates. Oh, it does. No, no doubt about it. But at the same time, I think, you know, the ball fields are, you know, it's one of the, it, I mean, Smith Park and the ball fields are one of the first two things you see as far as recreation. Mm -hmm. <coughs> <So. coughs> when's, the, when's the next, your next board meeting for Park 27? Okay. Okay. So, I mean, I don't know what all the ball field needs or what all. I think we just need to get together maybe and just lay out the options. Really. I think I'm going to have Jake look up, exactly. give his opinion on something. I don't want everyone to waste their time because we there is a lease with that organization. So yep. um, I was whispering to Howie, let's say if we can get a grant, but then we can't use it on that because there's a lease and it's their responsibility. Why do we have a lease with them <coughs> in the lease, pay for the services? Right. And then, you know, they can just use the field. It's a, We own it anyway. Right. So, but yeah. So, so we'll end the lease, and you guys will know. And... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See, these, these are the sticking points we have to get, have to get figured out. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Just Fine. kidding, Howard. Just kidding. <laughs> oh, I'm good. Yes. Mr. Kirk. Too long. <laughs> One other thing, I I think most of us saw in the uh, news media, Enan had uh, taken a long-range look at a park which protected their well field over there on Enon Road just north of the village. Have we had any thoughts of the possibility of extending the area behind the ballpark, taking over that Brubaker property? That way we would protect our well field and also enhance the parks up in that area. I can tell you what I believe Ian went through is um, that may be an alternate well field for them. Because ours is, we own everything except for the easements that we have. Right. Um, we're good. We, we're, we're in and out of looking at the property right behind the ball field because it's so close to our existing. Usually you do not have your well fields that close. If we were to drill an additional well to our current well field, that would be okay. We're looking for an alternative well field that is away. So if there is a spill here, it doesn't affect somewhere else. A spill still on 235 can affect all the way back there. So we haven't really pursued that as an alternative well field, because if we drill another well or two back there and then we contaminate any of the ones we have, you pretty much will contaminate them all. So, but I, I'm with you, we, we do own our 300 foot uh, isolation radius on all our wells. Um, we do have ownership of that. Um, if we were going to expand there, yes. If there was a piece of property that come up north that was reasonably for sale, that we knew soil borings were good, um, then we would definitely pursue that. And that'd be like the northern part, maybe just south of the um, golf course. And Mr. Hutchinson and I have already spoke about a parcel that is a possibility. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Cook. Anyone else? All right. Thank you, Mr. Hutchinson. We appreciate it as always, sir. 
Back to you, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Hutchison. And moving on with the city manager report, it's got a few uh, discussion topics here. So uh, the new water shutoff procedures, we had handed out uh, an Excel, I mean, a PowerPoint presentation. But even our out to council as well. There are copies of this presentation on this first sheet right here if you need it, as well as this pamphlet that we have. So I don't want to go through this slide by slide because it's kind of redundant. What this had, what this is here is this is the PowerPoint presentation that was uh, submitted to me by the staff in the utility department and various other departments in the city. So I did, and I did label the slides. So if we want to go back to go to uh, page two, it's really page three, but you don't title the you give the first page of the number because it's the title page. So slide two, which is page three. So basically what this is, is um, um, these changes were not made on our own. We actually called, talked to residents about what they would like to see change on their bill. So this is all based off customer feedback. So uh, switching to pay, uh, page number three, slide three, we have a current water bill image and an updated water bill image. Um, not much has changed between the two, but the biggest thing we have here is if you look over there on the left side where it says past due amount and it just has a number in red, uh, mirror that to the right side where we have a past due balance, but we also have a date associated with that. This is the date that you have to pay that past due balance by. Then we also have the due by date for your current charges should you be past due on both of those. We also added that date there at the bottom um, that's in the uh, mailing window. So again, this was based off feedback we, had, uh, we got from our citizens. Another thing we changed was the past due notice. So it looks like uh, they had went in and if you look at the bottom right on the new past due notice, it says final payment due date by 4 p.m. and it gives you a hard date. So this is no confusion. This is the day that you have to pay that by or you may get shut off. A lot of that has been the, been the same. They did add some things up top, but again, the, the big component to that change is the date at the bottom. On slide five, we have a image of the back side of the bills. So again, uh, good changes on this. So the new back side, we kind of streamlined all the numbers that we have with the new phone system that we have. Um, we just have someone answering the phone nowadays. You don't get a pre-recorded voice. If you call the city building, someone is actually picking that phone up and saying hello instead of it going through a recording. We got a lot of bad feedback about how long it took to get someone. So we heard that we changed it. We're also saving a lot of money monthly on our phone bill, which is awesome. So we streamlined that. Um, we did add in there some things onto the uh, left side. If you, uh, in the square box where it says water uses is billed, if you go on down one, two, three, four, where counts are assessed a 10% late fee charge, the full payment is not received by 4 p.m. on the due date. So that was just further expanded from the 10% penalty is due is charged if paid after the due date on the old bill. Uh, another thing they changed, and I really like this, is on the new back side of the bill, they actually put on there the way to sign up for the ACH deposit out of your bank account. So that's, that's a good thing. It goes right to the users every month should they want to get that in. They fill that out and give it back to us. So uh, we did already change an administrative policy, um, and that was the shutoff amount. Prior it was $20, and we were just shutting people off left and right. So what we did, we run stats on that. We found out that nearly almost 85 45, 80, 8, yeah, well, I'm adding two, oh. eight. 58% of our bill users are under $50. So um, that's why we came and said, all right, so what are we looking at here? So Colleen, our new uh, utility account rep, she did, she called a bunch of other places to figure out, like, what's your limit for your shutoff date? What we found is a range from anywhere from $15 past due up to 80. The average of that is 42. So when we look at our consumption rates and why we let, 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 uh, landed at the 50, you go down to that math down there. So someone's using 2,000 gallons, uh, they're paying 4094. So that, that'll, allow, that'll actually give them about two months before we shut them off because we're not shutting you off unless you have 50 or more. Um, and then basically, we don't want it to get too far out of hand. Like we looked at making a $100 shut off. But let's just say it's $100. And someone who normally is under 50, they're gonna have about two or three months to get caught up on. So that big block amount for them to get their stuff turned back on is gonna be a lot higher because of we're not shutting you off now at 100 opposed to 50. So we wanna look at that because generally the people that we turn off a lot, they live paycheck to paycheck. So we don't wanna put them in an undue hardship that they now have to pay a big amount to get turned back on. So that's why we landed at 50 based off the statistical data. Uh, we already looked at this before, but we did revisit it because I know maybe last year, the year before, council wanted us to look at that credit card fees. We are still looking at 90% of our users being under that $100 bill, so it makes no sense to change that fee. If it were to change, it would impact the majority of our customers, and that's not what we want to do. 
So that stat's pretty much stayed the same since the last time we looked at it. Um, another new thing we're going to be giving out is this new customer brochure. Uh, it's page one and page two, page uh, eight and nine on your handout, but actually made copies of it, gave uh, council members of it today, so here it is. So this will be going out. It ranges every, for tell you how to check your leaks, to um, reading your meter, to understanding how you're built. So it's really hopefully a one-stop shop of information that people can look at and be like, oh, I understand this better now. That'll be going out in the water bill? This one? Does this be given out to you? They're yeah. available in the office. We can mail to anybody that mm -hmm. would like one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then another thing too is payment arrangement. So before we only had it limited to three times a year. So we felt that was a little bit too less. So we changed it, uh, well, it's proposed change. You guys will be actually voting on that here soon. Uh, I think in a month, we introduced next week. Um, but we want to change that to any time. And why we limit it to three times a year. If someone needs to go on that payment arrangement and they've got good history of not breaking it, why are we making, why, why, why are we limiting it that and putting that person in a undue hardship? Um, so we uh, will be requesting that council change that. It's in the legislation that you guys will get next meeting. They also want us to look at additional state and county resources. Uh, I need help paying my bill. So we found one that runs until September 30th of this year. It is in here. This is also on, I do believe, uh, posted at the city web uh, city building um, but low-income household water assistance program i know we have referred quite a few people to this program with success um, and it I looks like i'm missing a slide in here but we do have another slide that angela gump did a fantastic job of getting an excel sheet with all the churches and pay people places that people can call in addition to the state and county resources so i will amend that and send that back out looking like it got accidentally deleted um, the last few pages are just some of the proposed changes we want to do that will, you guys will see at the, uh, at the next meeting when it's introduced. Uh, we already discussed changing the uh, $20 fee. We moved that up to $50. Um, another thing that I think we're, and this is codified, so we're going to have your opinion on this, is right now you have the option to put that account in your tenant's name if you show, chose WIS, and we find a lot of problems with that. So one of the things we're asking to do is uh, mandatory all accounts go into the property owner's name. So if you have a rental property, it still goes in your name. We'll have to let some of that, you know, a lot of people were grandfathered in on that. Let's just say you have a lease with a tenant that you have, so we couldn't make you change it now. But when you have a new tenant come in, that's when we get you um, and say, hey, we need to have this in your name. It's for the best, best of the city. Um, so we, we looked up bulk water rates and compared that to other cities and look how, how, look how they've done it. So again, take a look at this. This is just kind of like a warm up to what you guys are going to get at. I know I emailed you guys all those sections we amended. It's a lot. We're going to do a final review in the next week or two with Mr. Kiko and some other uh, folks in the city. So we'll have that to you guys in the next meeting. So again, payment arrangement terminology on page 16 here. Um, again, we just wanted to kind of clear out um, some things of the non-pay fee, what that is, and change it because I think it would cause a lot of confusion. So we're changing the non-pay fee. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, we are changing that a disconnect fee to a non-pay fee. So it's less abrasive to the user. Um, so I know there was a quick little rundown from it, uh, just doing it for the sake of time. It's all pretty self-explanatory. Um, so when we initiated these changes on Tuesdays, and Mr. Mrs. Harris, please feel free to chime in. Um, we saw great success with it. I think we, cut, uh, we shut off the half of what we usually do, which half the manpower is saved, half the wear and tear on the machinery was saved. But at the end of the day is we had a lot of happy customers, and that's the end goal here. Um, you want to add anything, anything to that, Ms. Harris? You, you did. You did great. We just we have been working very hard to try to get the customer service end up and do what we can to to make the bill easier to read, to be there to answer questions, and you know let people know that we're we're people in the office that really do appreciate our residents and we want to be there to help. So we're very excited about a lot of the positive changes that we heard were always negative. So we're looking forward to these uh, changes. And they, that, her department did a fantastic job with data gathering and putting a great PowerPoint presentation together for me. Can I any discussion on that, Mr. Bridge? I have one. Sure. Um, on slide five, we removed the call before you dig, 811. Can you put that back on me? Um, yeah, we can look at it. <laughs> where are we at here? Five. I'm on oh, five. Old one has call before you dig, 811. New one doesn't have Oh, I see. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, it's easy. There's a good one. Yes. Yep. Sounds good. Good. Thank you for that. 
All right, and moving on with the city manager. Sorry, I don't have, I have all boring stuff, guys. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So we have the waste management. They, uh, Melinda Anto had come at the last meeting and requested the increase for the inflationary rate. And I do believe Mr. Bond had asked for uh, what additional levels of service could they get. Uh, she immediately came back, said nothing for free, which was expected. However, council did have me look at every week recycling. So these are the numbers that we have. And right now for us to upgrade to every week, every week recycling, that would be an additional $1.95. And that is with all levels of service paying the increase. However, if you want to leave your seniors out of it, that would be 215 across the board. Um, both of those rates do include that 93 cent inflationary increase. Uh, some of the things I, I would like council to kind of think about when you, do, when you think about the decision, I was talking to one of the council members who actually has two, recy uh, two recycling cards that they could possibly get rid of um, to help cut that difference cost a little bit less. So you gotta think outside the box like that. If you do have two recycling containers, you can probably get rid of one and save that fee. Mm -hmm. um, so um, another thing too is if we should ever need an extra dumpster, um, I don't think we'll need it if we go to every, every, every week recycling, but should we need it, um, we're looking at additional 2,500 to $3,000. And there's multiple ways council can have that build. You can either build it directly to the city and we just pay for it. If you have it, go back onto your users. You just take the number of users and divide that by the number. I did a rough calculation based off 1650 users at 3,000, the high end, that would add an additional 1.8 to 2.1 cents if you were to have the users pay for it opposed to the city being built for it. But I honestly don't think we're going to need a second number if we go to every, every re recycling. So um, I know that's a lot to come in, um, but we have a legislative timeline I'd like to hit if possible. And that would be introduce uh, legislation at the next meeting, May 2nd, with it voted on at the 16th with effective date of 531, because they're gonna need time to get all the new um, recycling dumpsters um, if people want more to get them delivered and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely up for council. Um, I will be seeking a motion um, if you guys wanna move forward with these increases. I didn't wanna have Jake do all these legislation measures with all these options without knowing which way you guys wanted to go and, and, and wasting some of the uh, attorney fund, I fund money. What's the charge of a, of a uh, second recycle? Like, you know, for example, if someone has $55. Two, what is it? $55. $55 to have the... Mm -hmm. okay. A year? Quarter. 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 Yeah. So was, it, was it $12? I thought it was 12 bucks extra. It's like nine, nine, twelve, twelve, nine, twelve dollars $55 a quarter extra for either a regular, uh, an actual recycle bin or an actual trash. So the, so the two prices here, the buck 95 and the 215, that includes the, mm -hmm. the um, what is it, 95 cents? 93. 93 cents. Okay. Council, any feedback on that? <clears throat> Do we have a lot of people that need it every week? Uh, we 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 get we get a lot of calls. On that. Uh, I, I mean, if you're asking me proportionate against our city users, I it's not in the grand scheme of things, but it's it's it would I think help out a lot. Yes, it would simplify a lot of mm -hmm. confusion too. It would. Now that is basically the dollar more all of us. Yeah, I mean, if you have one car, twelve fifty, so then you get rid of that, you're saving yourself money. Yeah. The dollar ninety five every how often? Quarter. No, no, I think that's a month. It's a month. It's a month. Because mm -hmm. ninety three cents is going in there, regardless. Well, not not going in regardless, but. It's going in December, regardless. So, yeah. so it would basically be an extra two dollars and fifteen cents a month if you want to not not pass that on to our senior citizens. Give them service and not pass. Not not make them pay for it. I mean, it's basically a, a, cu a cup of coffee a month, yeah. which I buy daily. So. Mm -hmm. No more coffee for you. Oh. <laughs> What do you guys think? 
I love going back to the weekly recycle. I, I think it'll help the pool. Um, like I said last meeting, so many people are getting home deliveries now. I mean, mm -hmm. they're just getting cardboard stacked up everywhere. I think that's why we're running up so many pool problems. Um, you know, now yeah, that's not gonna solve. They don't take the time to break the boxes down, but knowing that you have that coming every week, for me, it's gonna. I mean, yeah. I would agree. Pretty much exactly what you said. I mean, there's still, even though we've done it this way for so many times, you still see a, a question pop up or someone will call. I mean, is, is this week recycling mm -hmm. outside of town? Yeah, you know, just, I mean, I know you can go and look at the map, but it still gets a little confusing sometimes. So. I just think, I mean, you got to think for the last time, even, the, even prior to this last negotiation we did was, what, two years ago? And then even the one prior to that, the amount of people that buy stuff online mm -hmm. has skyrocketed. Right. Oh, yeah. I mean, just absolutely shot up. So... I think it's justifiable. Yeah, I agree. Would, would we need to execute a new contract with them? No, I asked her about that, so we would not have to rebid it. It's just amending the services that we have. She said she's done this frequently before with other municipalities. But I am going to run that through Jake, by the way. Just to be sure. <coughs> As far as I'm concerned, I would be, I would entertain a motion that we continue as is, let them move the rate increase up, leave everything else the same. Can you leave it at every other week? I'm sorry? Can you leave it at every other week? Leave it every other week. I personally... This week was recycling. I didn't have anything in mind, so I didn't even put one out. And I guess I'm a senior citizen, so. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Mullen, you know what they told me. It's a minimal increase for price convenience and not having to. Well, I mean, especially, I mean, everything in. well, and have it sitting there for two out. weeks. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, I yeah. would like to see us get something out of them. You know? Honestly, I, I feel like they should be able to bring some more value to this. But I know you, you said you asked them. And maybe we keep that in mind for future negotiations. I think it would help you guys if you went to a, a city-wide hauling contract where you don't have everyone being able to choose their own hauler. You're talking for businesses. Mm -hmm. Businesses and residential. Mm -hmm. That's where you're going to get your most bang for your buck. Well, mm -hmm. Mike, can I address that? Having been a garbage man and in the garbage business for umpteen amount of years, we do not want to go into a situation where we've got three, four haulers hauling in here in this city. Number one, the streets which we've already got Villa that's pretty well tore up due to one or two trucks. If we bring more heavier trucks into the city, I think your streets are going to go real quick. I think you're going to have more people on the fact of not paying their bills. The hauling companies do not make much profit. In the garbage business, the profit is made by the landfills or where you take the trash. So consequently, the hauling companies are operating on very marginal profits and they're not going to give us much for our bang for our buck. That's one of the reasons that I think your pricing is about where it is. When you saw the added increases that are being paid at grocery stores. These are also being sent on to the haulers due to the cost of labor, fuel, tires, equipment. The cost of garbage truck, back when I was in the business, was probably 25000 Now you're about eight to 10 times that price. So consequently, it's a no-win situation. 
But my first thought is, number one, we keep the heavier trucks out of the city as much as we can. Thank you, sir. I need to say the same thing. Single hauler. You're saying. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. Single I, I could just tell you, we just got our bill yesterday for, you know, I just live outside the city. It's $80 a quarter. No, no recycling. I pay $13 a month with every seek recycling and every week trash pickup. I don't know, you use whatever trash container I want. So it's a it's good scale price of the economy, though. That's a, this is an excellent price on this contract. Oh, yeah, it is. And the reason I'm yeah, so cheap is because they go with the township around us. But that's the more people we have into it, which is why we're advocating that haulers. They'll get the more bang for the buck. Because now they got the businesses. Now they got the, you know, four unit apartment complex. Because right now, Mr. Bond, the only people that fall under our current contract are single family houses. And then if you live in like a double. Other than that, you're fair game to choose whoever. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm, sorry. I'm not a proponent. I guess it would depend on the rate as far as forcing the businesses in one hauler. Just because I know I recently renegotiated our pickup at our business, and we got more service for less money switching haulers mm -hmm. um, here recently. It's yeah, and but that it, was and that was bidding back and forth and, and working hard with them to to get stuff. So. Mm -hmm. So more it just it would it would take some of that ability to negotiate out, you know, obviously. It's very uncommon the way we do it here. It's very common to have single haulers. So that's where you get your bank for the buck. That's where it's most cheaper on your citizens and you know. And that's why you know, you're in a city, it's a little different than if you're out in the township kinda of, you have a lot more lax rules, but um, yeah, it's very uncommon the way we do it. But yeah, it does take a lot away from the business owner for sure. Mm -hmm. But it's and for the greater good of the community. So I think that's why some of the municipalities look at kind of doing like that. Good, Mr. Bond. And if if the city grows and we have more rooftops, I would assume that would give us more room for a cheaper price. Well, potentially, if we grow, keep on growing, we're, uh, I'm going to approach council about looking at bringing it in house. Kind of how West Milton did. Okay. Um, see how that goes. I'll pick that guy's brain at the end I like have before. Um, but if we have more people paying into it, would it be more justifiable? Because that way, you know. But uh, West Milton just brought theirs in house because they were not happy with how the rates were being charged through waste management. So I'm curious to see how over two or three years that program works out. And then, because that's a very, very good community that we can mirror up because there's a lot of similarities between us and West Milton as far as population, earned income, all that stuff. That if they could find a way to do it that's profitable and it works, can we do the same thing? And that way we control our costs. And we don't have to worry about another hauling going in. Right now I don't I, it's risky because of the price of the machinery and hauling and all that stuff. Right now I would recommend it. But if we have, you know, five, ten years down the road, maybe a different story. Okay. Mm -hmm. So do you need a, are you asking for a motion tonight? Which direction here? Definitely going to have some direction. Um, would like that. I and mean, it's up to you guys. If not, we will not be able to introduce anything on the second. We have to wait to the 16th if you want to think about anything. Um, <coughs> so I'm, not, I'm not here to press motion pressure. And leave it as is. I will make a motion that we leave the contract as it is per Melinda's uh, recommendation and we move the increase up to the present whatever billing period let me ask you this it would the citizens if it goes through the 93 cents if they're going to pay the 93 cents extra would they want to go ahead and pay the extra whatever dollar it is to get more recycling so that's that's what it comes down to if i'm going to pay if i'm going to pay 93 cents as an increase so i'm going to go and pay basically double that to get recycling if, if the citizen wants to enter into another recycling can, so be it. But let that be a separate item. And as, as per the current agreement, yep. charge, okay. Okay, so you have a motion to leave it as it is. Basically. I'll second it. Okay, and a second by Mr. Vice Mayor. Motion to leave as is, but give the 93 cent raise. That's my understanding. Just move, move the 93 cents from... Well, December. what, uh, December we were supposed to do that? 
Okay, but Lou. You know, basically we're grant talking increase. about six dollars. The grant inflationary increase. Mm -hmm. That's what we titled it as inflationary. And Lou I don't want to tack any more money on to the citizens of the city uh, than we absolutely have to. But I understand waste management situation that they need the extra money, so I'm willing to spend six dollars. So that first was Cook and then Grim. Cook and Grim. But you got a you got a bin down there at the pool that you can take it in. I don't. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. All right. So we got the motion. We got the second. Okay. Ready to call? Please. Councilman Bond. No. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. No. Councilman Roadwald. No. Mayor Lowry? No. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. That motion fails. That is two to four. All right. Another motion, Council. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to uh, accept the $2.15 increase for weekly recycle. Through waste management on top of that, which includes the 93 cent rate increase. So it would be 215, would it not? Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, you said 315. Oh, I'm sorry, 215. 215. Per month. Per month. But that would not. But, but you have senior citizens. citizens. Yeah, yeah not, not senior citizens. citizens. And if you're on a senior citizen rate, it won't affect you. I'll second that. But you. Uh, motion by Mr. Raywall, second by Mr. Bond. And will you say that again, like one more time, Dan, please? Uh, <clears throat> motion to. Uh, I, that I, I couldn't hear you. Oh, to, accept the, to accept the, uh, 215, the 215 increase, which includes the 93 cent okay. early rate increase, and then to add weekly recycle okay. for all citizens. But no increase to uh, the senior senior citizen plan. Okay. I like it now, don't you? <laughs> when you're ready, Mr. Burr. All right, and the second was Bond? Yes. Okay. Then Bond. <laughs> Sorry. Councilman Cook? No. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? No. Councilman Bond. Yes. All right. That motion passes four to two. Okay, very much. And back to you, Mr. Bridge. All right, thank you. And move on to the city manager's report. So, uh, uh, joint meeting with, excuse me, Bethel Township, Miami County. So, uh, they have agreed to do the annexation agreement. I was in talk with their um, uh, township attorney and uh, uh, township administrator I think, last week. So they are requesting that they have a joint meeting similar to how they handled it with Heber Heights. The goal of that meeting is to establish two things. One is they want to be left out of the, uh, they want that removed from the township, which we agreed to do. Uh, they also want to explore a discussion with council about stating, stating an annexation boundary. Basically it'd be a line that says, we will not go past that if, if we want to annex. Um, I'm not qualified to answer on behalf of council. So that's why they're requesting that joint government meeting. So I talked with Andy today. Um, we would like that to be the first or second week in May. They're gonna work around our schedule since I have seven of you and there's only three of them. Um, I would probably at this point in time, um, get maybe a few dates from guys, from you guys. Um, 
I, what I would like to do is reach out to Paula Crew and come to the local district to see if we can have the elementary school like we did for the income tax credit position. Because if we have it here, we can only have 65 people, and that would include you, you guys, um, me, um, a few administrative personnel, plus their three commissioners, plus their probably their attorney, plus their administrator. So by the time we get all the people in here, it'd be probably a lot less room for them. Yeah. So um, if I have a few dates from council, I know it's kind of um, quick and sudden for those availabilities, um, and then I can work around those dates and see if I can get uh, the school involved. And we're looking at first or second we can make. Is this something we just want to maybe, hold on, before I go any further, let me get the calendar up here. I don't think we should have it at the same night as our monthly month first meeting in May. You said the first or second week? Yeah. So maybe May 9th? 9th or 10th? I mean, I'm sorry. Let me, hold on. 16th? Hold on, 9th. I'm sorry. Yeah, 9th. 9th or 10th. Mm -hmm. okay. That's fine. I have baseball game. You do? Yeah. On both those days? Yeah, all of them. Oh, okay. <laughs> what about the 11th and 12th? Baseball games. <laughs> On the 11th and 12th, too? Uh, yes. What time? Nine. Six. What time are they over? 8.30. <laughs> okay. So that's... That. Now, the following week, I'm free except for Thursday. Okay. So except for Thursday of the third week of May? Yeah, except for the 19th. And you have any availability the first week of May? No, the first week I'm open. It's not 9th, 10th, or 11th. Well. So if you want to do what? 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, you're not open? May 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th? No. Do you guys have any Saturday availability? That's worse than the May 9th, 10th, 11th, or 12th. <laughs> okay, so what we'll do is we will give me, give me the first week of May, give me two dates. You're talking about the second, third, fourth, fifth? Yep. I'm available any of those. Talk, other council? Well, Are we all good? You, other you council? Okay, so we'll do three and four. 6.30 to be determined. Okay. So the week of May 9th is out, correct, for everyone? Even on a Friday, 13th? Oh, we're not doing it on Friday, 13th. Okay, so the 16th. Um, the third week in May, you said what, Mr. Rodolph? Third week, I'm good on every day except for the 19th. So we're not doing on the 16th yeah, council meeting. So 17th or 18th, mm -hmm. is that okay with other council members? Yeah. 6.30, to be determined. Do you guys want to move that to 7? Give uh, more people to get home, get ready, because it might be a heavily attended meeting. What do you think? 6.30. Okay. Okay. Well, I will work with that. Clearly, we want to try to secure the school first. Um, is that first preference? Is that okay with everyone? Yeah. The school? Okay. All right. If we can't get the shelter, I mean, the school, does anyone know of a church that would let us use some a facility or anything that they would have a big enough space that we don't have to worry about no. occupancy limits? Mm -hmm. Do? We could try the the Methodist got that big you know, room down in the basement. Does anyone have a connection at Methodist? It was just here. <laughs> I mean, you can if you want, but I wasn't going to task you with that. He was just here. Is that, is that, can you reach back out to him, Mr. Grimm, and see if he has any dates for? Or have Mr. Grimm do it. You don't have to do that. Oh, that's um. Tuesday, Wednesday. Do you have time, Mr. Grimm? Do you mind to reach it back out to him? Okay. 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 Sure. 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 Yeah. No Check problem. with the school first. If the school can't do it. I think that's the best spot. Yeah. We still have all the smart stuff we'll about. need for sure. I'm going to I'm gonna shoot Mrs. Crew an email tomorrow, so I'll let you know. Okay. Awesome. Um, so oath of a council member, um, uh, we're going to have to redo, or they're just going to amend her oath um, when she was sworn in. It said the 25th. It needs to be the 20, sorry, Third. 20 year 2023 expiration, opposed to year 2025. So just a little error. They're going to fix on their own. No big deal. Uh, American Fireworks date. I was asked to secure a date very early, uh, but I got word from a Parks and Rec board member that they weren't so much looking for a secure date right now. They just want to plan it a little earlier next year. Is that correct, Parks and Rec Board? Yes. 
Okay. So the challenge that we had this year, because the fireworks date wasn't set until last month, a lot of food trucks we were trying to get for our um, Based on the research and a lot of the feedback that we've gotten from the food trucks that we have contacted, they usually open their schedule um, either late, like late this year, November, December, or early next year. <coughs> November, Super. October. Yeah. Now that we can try to bring in, um, you know, more variety of different selections. Okay. Um, yeah, you could, June 24th. Yeah. yeah. That'd be a week early. Okay. That would give us advantage over Tip City and Huber Heights. We'll have theirs on the 31st or 30th. Yeah. All right. Anything else, Mr. Burge? No, yeah, I think I'm good. Oh, let me go through my work in progress. Council retreat examples from other communities, still working on that. Uh, it's it's a task. Not a lot of people do council retreats very often, so to find one that actually done one other than Fairborn has been a task, but we're getting there. Um, boards and commission handbook, still not ready for that. Social media policy, and developing that right now. I'll kind of give council a overview of that when I'm ready to move forward with it, but just looking at streamlining our social media policy, and of course, indigenous burials. Council retreat examples, one of the things I want to throw in there is I don't know if we can do like a series of things that we can get taught on, but I would like someone to come in and explain to you, me, not that we're doing it wrong, our former government. You know, just better explain to us that it's been in it for 20, 30 years. They know the ins and outs. This is the former government we have. This is how you should act. This is how I should act. Just a component of that um, retreat uh, with an additional stuff. So I think that would benefit everyone a lot, too. Um, so that's one of the things I'm going to be advocating for. Um, yep, and that's all I have. All right. I just, I'm all right, any questions or comments for Mr. Bridge before we move on? So I'm blood there yeah. and I can't scratch my head without Ms. Eggleston? Um, Ms. Bridge, where are we at on Mayor's Court? Um, as I updated council last meeting, as soon as it's done on the inside and we get criminal tickets printed, we will be running. Thank you, Ms. Eggleston. Anyone else? Thank you for the report, sir. Yeah. Much appreciated. Yep. All right, moving on to comments from members of the public. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, feedback, please go to the podium. We'll need your name and address for the record. And for those of you who haven't been here, uh, well, let's see back here. we've got a five-minute timer, so. Go ahead, Ms. Tuttle. Hello, Melissa Tuttle. Uh, I 30 Dover Road, Springfield, Ohio. I am the elected clerk of courts. Oh, is that? Yeah. Oh, okay. No. When it goes to red. I thought it was a mug the entire time, <laughs> so that's very nice. Um, great to come out and see. Give me your uh, address for. Oh, I said at 30 Dover Road. Oh, so I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. That's OK. Um, I just wanted to say uh, from the comments that you made, Mayor Lowry, t about the uh, vehicles, um, those do need to get titles. Um, golf carts, ATVs, um, UTVs, those are all titled vehicles. And also, at, you may want to have your law director look at local ordinances. Local governments can um, require some stipulations on those. So that might be something within the planning um, because they do need to get registered. They do have the ability to have titles. And that's one of the things that we do in the title office. Um, Indian Lake is a municipality that does have golf carts that are allowed to be on the roads. And they do have certain restrictions. They need to be um, road worthy, and that means like having headlights and turn signals and making the certain speeds. So uh, I definitely not going to go through that in five minutes, but I definitely invite that that would be something that we do with a lot in um, the title office, especially this New Carlisle branch, because of the municipalities around us. Um, law enforcement does get an inve um, can inspect vehicles to determine whether they are roadworthy mm -hmm. and meeting the standards because especially with 235 they need to be making state standards not just local standards of driving around on a farm okay. second thing I um, was over here for the egg festi festivities on Saturday and uh, kudos to your your community for what you do um, I will also give the kudos for the water bills because your guys' water bills average is far less than Springfield's. 
Um, ours has uh, been significantly higher over the 15 years I've lived in the city with owning a home. And I will also say kudos for you dealing with um, garbage um, removal because the city of Springfield has when uh, Mayor Lowry made the mention about how many trucks go. I think there's seven different uh, services now in Clark in Springfield for so every they have Monday morning every single truck goes down the road and that is a, a concern that I've always mentioned is how much those roads are getting hit by that weight of that truck continuously going over and the cost savings so um, I've known people that have the Columbus water bill that is combined between uh, the water bill, sewer bill, and trash bill is all one. Um, so, and I know City of Toledo, when I was up there, they had uh, centralized trash service. So I believe at one point Springfield was the largest city that did not have a centralized trash refuge in Ohio. Um, so I commend you guys for dealing with issues that you most, um, some other people don't have to deal with. So thank you for what you guys do in this community. I'm out here often. I uh, like to go to Mr. Max and go to the, um, I, I go to the uh, Mexican grocery store and there's particular hot sauce that we're a fan of and peppers. So I uh, just want to say thank you for all you do in this community and then um, introduce myself as uh, a candidate for judge in May 3rd. Um, so I do value everything that you do out this way. I am a lifelong Clark County resident. I grew up in Springfield Township, so I was on the other side um, of the county, but really do appreciate the facilities like this building. It is amazing that what you, the resources that you have and that you're continuing to add, and uh, don't know how close. You're good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I will also make another side comment of the conversation of um, when you were talking, when the public service director was talking about um, the ADA mats, um, I know this, know the city of Springfield, some of those have blown away and we're only down for like a year. So really make sure and investigate if that's a mandate because you might want to look down even in the core block of the county courthouse because they do blow away, which as bricks won't blow away, but um, with water damage and um, the high winds that we've been getting lately, that might be something to investigate. So, yeah. If I may make a comment, she commented on checking with other communities have approved uh, golf carts on the road. I already got it down. Enan has. Enan yeah. has it? Yeah. Yes, they have. And they have the procedures. Him, Chris well, I did this. I mean, all golf carts are, are illegal, but I'm telling you, you got to do modifications for them. So, but we'll have Jake look at it just so we're not superseding state law. We're already trying to make probably, but you already got me to look at that stuff. So. Yeah. And, and there's many more different types of vehicles like the slingshot and the, the ones that are chassis and everything else. So there's far more um, unusual vehicle types coming on the market. So, yeah. Thank you. And uh, while you're here, just one quick uh, big thanks. You guys, the people of title office, we love our title office. Yes, we do. It's, <laughs> it's, it's the gem of the city in my personal opinion because if you go to Huber or any of those other places, it is a nightmare. So those guys do a great job, so make sure you tell them. I, tell I, them will, that I will pass that on. And we appreciate everything they do. Well, and that also brings eight, like there are days when we have eight different counties that do transactions in Clark County um, just because of how close New Carlisle is. So um, I do see the clerk's office as a revenue. Um, I'm the only elected official that actually has to work for business because you can do cross-county titling. and. Offering good service is exactly how we get people to say, come on over there, it's really convenient. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm working with the new owners to try to improve the parking situation so that there's more. Sometimes I've driven by and I can't get parking and right. there's nobody yeah. inside. So. All right. well, thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate yes. it. Thanks for coming out and seeing us. All right, anyone else? Questions, comments? All the above? Judy Bible, 806 White Pine, and I'm going to talk about the Bethel annexation thing. Uh, I had noticed in the newsletter that 
it had mentioned that the density would be comparable to existing neighborhoods north of Lake Avenue, which made me curious. So I actually went on, picked out various addresses or plots north of Lake Avenue to compare. Um, and I'm just going to go square footage wise, it's the easiest way. Uh, what they're proposing in Bethel Township is 6,375 square feet. So the closest thing to that would be the Northwood subdivision, which uh, there was one place I looked on Brookfield is 6,328 square feet and one on Drake was 6,240. I looked at one on Gerald, Flora, uh, North Church, Funston, and my own home. Beyond that, the next smallest plots were uh, would be 7,423 square feet going up to where I live is 8,400 square feet. Um, so basically we're looking at, I'm assuming, larger homes if they're going to be $250,000 on smaller plots. So we're talking real dense because the other thing is the Bethel annexation is only going to be 51 foot wide lots proposed, proposed. Um, my lot is 70 foot wide but the thing that really struck me was at the planning board meeting I actually talked you know was sitting next to the gentleman mm -hmm. from the developer and we were talking and between my house and my neighbor's house is 18 feet he told me the distance between the houses in that development will be 12 feet. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, that is way too dense for that area. Um, and of course, other concerns are the Bethel schools and the proximity to Silver Lake and any damage that can be done there if something goes astray. So it's not that I'm totally against all growth in the city. But I think we really need to look hard at that particular area because of, you know, the density, the roads, the school, the proximity to Silver Lake. And if nothing else, I would strongly suggest that the density be spread out more. Because I know on Bethel's, it's the thing you gave me and I can't remember, the the comprehensive land use plan. planning thing. They have that area designated for nothing less than a third of acre per, mm -hmm. from a third to two acres per lot is what they have it on their plan. That would be more reasonable in my opinion if we just, if we have to go through with this annexation, make it so it's not so painful to the people in the area. Mm -hmm. You still get some income tax and hopefully don't damage the ecosystem over at Silver Lake. So that's my two cents for tonight. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? Please. Janelle Zimmerman, 219 Prentice Drive. Um, I certainly agree with Judy on everything, and I just don't think it's just plain not fair to those people in Bethel Township. All the they they don't have enough room in their schools now, and I just think we really have to look into that. What what that would do to them, and I don't know whether Tecumseh will they be getting more kids from that district in our school too, or will it just be Bethel? I would, I would assume, yes. Okay. I, mean, I, I don't know the details. Because, boy, I think, oh, you know, we know. really need to we'll check with the schools. They, they don't have room for a lot more kids either. Yeah, but they can deny that. That's something. But I'm saying they could. Yeah. That's well, even, even if they do, they got plenty of, they got plenty of room. If they're approving an open roll uh, application, it's because that's they can take it in. But, but, but they're not going to get, they're, they're not re redrawing district lines or anything to take those kids. And Paul and Cruz already flat out told me in an email, they're not interested in taking those kids on at all. So that will not be happening. They will be Bethel kids unless they do the open enrollment application, which I'm assuming. So they'll all have to go to Bethel then, if, yeah, without open enrollment. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Well, I just think it's wrong. I know if I lived out in the, in the country and I had all those restrictions added on me and all those houses built around me, mm -hmm. I would just be dying. Because <laughs> I've always lived in the country and it was a struggle to move to New Carlisle, but I love it here and I love the small town feeling. And um, So I, I hope they look for some other alternative. Thank you, Janelle. Anyone else? Alrighty. Good evening. Jeff Morford, 4720 South Scarf Road, Miami County. Uh, to start, as usual, I'm against the proposed development out there. I'm worried about the uh, environment out there, the retention ponds, the water runoff, all that. And I've suggested the city not allow them services. You're going to get sued. You're afraid of that. So when it goes to zoning, I've suggested again, just don't give them the zoning. Leave it agricultural. For the last two meetings, I've asked the city if it has surveyed or polled or telephoned the citizens of New Carlisle about the plan development at Scarf and Lake. The reply, the reply was no. At the end of the meeting, the mayor suggested that if New Carlisle citizens were against the development, they would be here and let their opposition be known. If not, the committee would assume that the citizens were for the development. So I took my time to go door to door on Tuesday, April 12th, from 2.30 in the afternoon to 5.30, three hours. Also, I parked my car on Lake Street in New Carlisle and put up two signs asking if you were against the 300 house development at Lake and Scarf, stop and sign. This was on Thursday, April 14th. I was there from 1.30 to 8, approximately six and a half hours. I was there approximately 20 minutes before a city worker stopped and said I needed to move off the street because I was on the city right away. So I moved into the church parking lot where my wife and I got married there 50 years ago. The results if you want them, I got copies of them. The results of the door to door were I knocked on 40 houses, 25 houses were home and answered the door. Of them, one gentleman said he was indifferent and did not sign. Two houses didn't speak English, so the communication was a little tough. One house said he worked for the city and would rather not talk to me. Yet I got 25 signatures from citizens who were against the development on Lake and Scarf. 25. Next, park at the church, 92 New Carlisle citizens signed. Many more people stopped to sign, but I asked only sign if you're from New Carlisle and old enough to vote. I have been contacted since then many times for the next opportunity to sign. And it, it, it was not a petition, it was just a survey. Talking to everyone, they were mostly concerned with the big construction traffic and then the house traffic and congestion. And they moved to New Carlisle to live in a small town atmosphere. If I wanted to live in Huber Heights, I would have water house in Huber Heights. Also, the subject of not showing up to New Carlisle meetings, they replied, too busy, I work, I got kids, I have dinner, my kids have sports, I have a sick relative, transportation issues. And it went on from there. Also, they didn't attend, but they did watch online, and sometimes they mentioned, I won't go into that part of it, but that's where I stand. I, if you, I've got their addresses, signatures, New Carlisle residents. This is not Miami County residents. This is New Carlisle people. That was a total, since I'm still green, I'll keep it with it. That's a total of 117 people took their time to talk to me in a nine hour thing. And that's not me parking on 235. That's not me parking on Jefferson any of that. So I'm just letting you know there are new Carlisle citizens, real citizens. If, you, if you're interested in this, are you interested in this or not? Does council want a copy of them? 
Can I ask what he said to the when you knocked on the door? What did you What did you tell the citizen? I, I mean, told him. Get, if you're knocking on my door, what yep. What did you say? Yep. I got it here. <clears throat> yep. I just had this little survey. Mm -hmm. I said I'm. I told him who I was. I said I'm against the proposed uh, housing development, and I said this is just a survey that you're signing, name, address, phone number. I'm against the proposed 300 house development at Lake and Scarp. I said there were people issue, worried about the schooling, roads, traffic. I said I'm worried about the environmental. But I said I will show, uh, tell you up front the city is for it because of tax and the city is for it for expansion. So there's two sides of the story. I absolutely told that to everybody that pulled up to me in the car and I absolutely told everybody I knocked on the door. So I gave, and I didn't go into detail. I didn't, you know, a lot of people, I didn't tell them where I was from, just that I was from Miami County. I didn't try to offset it very, you know, not only telling one side of the story. Sure. But I told them absolutely everybody that if they pulled up in the parking lot, I wouldn't let them sign if they were from Miami County. And that's what I'm saying. So if, again, I was sort of amazed that you, you don't take the time to talk to the citizens. And you, no. you, 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 your, your comment was, if they don't show up here, you assume that they are for the project. No, no what I was saying was, is because I know what I said also already had gotten twisted, that we don't, that, that the citizens don't care. What I was explaining to you was a pattern, which is, I think in 10 years, I've seen that pattern, and it, 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 it's exactly how I said it. All I said was, is if we're doing something that people like, like I said, if the repaving roads, building a new park, people don't show up and, and support that. If we're doing right. something wrong, they show up. Right. I'm not saying, and I, I never said the word that nobody cared. Somebody said okay. I did, and I did not. I, said I take that back then. So I'm I, just I saying that you're saying if no one shows up here, and I'm saying people told me they didn't show up because everybody has busy lives. Oh, I understand. And they, they were willing, because I took the time to knock on their door, they were willing to sign and say they were against it. And when I knocked on their door, it was an amazing amount. You know, 25 people out of the 25 doors, typically. Mm -hmm. Because I got two signatures at some doors, you know. But anyway, yes or no? Council? There we go. Yeah. Mike. Thanks for your time. Thank you. I appreciate it. And anything else I can do for you? Because I've got some. Is there comments or something? Go ahead, Mr. Cook. On advice of my legal counsel, he has recommended that I, as a councilman, do not respond to any conversation in regards to this annexation as to the fact that we at council do not have anything on the table at this time. I was going to give him that. Mm -hmm. Back off then? No, dude. If you've got a copy and they want it, by all means. No, 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 no. Uh, but what I was going to say, now that you're, that you're finished, um, you know, I've seen it numerous times, and I hate digging on this, but, and you'd mentioned it as well, that we are for this. I don't think anybody, just like Mr. Cook has said, I don't think anyone has said we're 100% for this. Everyone's saying it's a done deal, council wants it done. I haven't said that. I'm interested in the idea, and I've said that. It's interesting. It's an interesting idea. But until, like Mr. Cook just said, again, until they bring us all the information that we need to dissect it, I can't make a decision. So, I mean, we've said that a million times. I, we can't say it anymore. It's, it's what it is. So. Well, it's hard for me to understand, you know, what the cart before the horse or something. Because my, my comment is <clears throat> there's legal questions if it is you don't offer their sewage and water. Is there legal questions if you do not give them a change of zoning? Is that a question? Yes. I didn't understand it. Okay. You said that if the developer knocks on your door and says, I would like to be annexed, and the developer then asks for services, be in sewage and water, committee has mentioned that that is not acceptable because they're afraid that they would be sued by the developer. Am I wrong in that? 
Well, again, I mean, before I would say yes or no to that, I would have to look at all the information about infrastructure and, and the, okay. you know, the capacities, uh, you know, and again, traffic studies. I mean, again, we don't know any of those answers yet. Well, that's what I've been led to believe anyway. Then the other question was, when the developer comes for zoning request, he would, it's zoned agricultural, and he would like it to be zoned residential. I don't know, it's R6, 7, 8, 9, 10, I don't know what it is. Can you say, no, thank you, we will not rezone it, it's going to be, it will stay agriculturally zoned? Could the planning board do that? Why would you do it? Then you might as well just not do the annexation. Right. That's, so. I mean, that's the, that'll be the planning board's decision, not, not ours. Well, well, that's their suggestion. Does that not come to you guys for a vote on that then? You guys will get to annex in the annexation agreement. It'll say you're providing water, you're providing sewer. Part of that is, you know, the zoning has to change X amount of months after the annexation goes through. You guys can sit there and say you're not running a water and sewer, and the Miami County commissioners probably won't accept it. It's in your land, comprehensive land use plan, to go after ARPA, which is these kind of developments. I am the one who said they could potentially get sued if they would deny this, and that's because it's in our comprehensive land use plan that the city actually goes after these type of developments. We encourage them. We're not the one doing the annexation process. It's a private owner, it's a developer coming to buy a land from a private owner. He's the one petitioning to come into the city. They can sit there and say, yeah, we're not going to give them water and sewer, the county can do it. Now, they'll have to take it up with the developer. Just today, on the da daily news, a what city was getting sued? It was, was it West? No, it was Lebanon. Lebanon. They're getting sued by their developer because they're not doing the stuff that probably it says they're supposed to do. It yep. has to do with permitting issues, has to do a lot. So there is legal recourses for anyone to do. But yes, you guys can sit there, an annexation agreement says we're not providing you water and sewer. Mm -hmm. Miami County is not going to approve the annexation. They just denied the Huber Heights one for a second time because Huber did not put in that annexation agreement or statement of services that they're going to offer water and sewer. So. Yes, you'll have legislation come to you. That's the whole point of why we're having the joint meeting with Bethel County. Right. Your township trustees have agreed to the annexation agreement. Do you understand that? Like, that means that they're, they're going to move forward with that if they come to the agreement. One of the agreements is that they want to do a, ban a boundary uh, line that Can says... Heist, are you talking about this one? Just talking about this. Your, your elected officials want to meet with our elected officials to establish a boundary limit like we won't go past this particular line i'm assuming it's probably going to be right outside the area past this current development it says we won't go past that i don't think huber and bethel has come to that so council's got to take it into consideration because let's say we agree to that boundary limit but the huber don't huber's going to keep on coming in and we're going to stop stale right there because we agreed to this boundary annexation but that's something for the elected officials to get together and talk about so i'm excited for that joint meeting for that purposes so you're your side can come, our side can come, and they can kind of get the concerns out. All right, thank you, Mr. Bridge. Thank you. Thank Anyone you. else? All right, moving on. Two committee reports, Charter Review, Parks and Recs. I don't believe you have anything. Okay, thank you. I'm down. <laughs> don't have it. So with the exception of Mrs. Berner and Deputy Major Sack, I have something for the five of you. It's all something different. Um, nothing that needs to be addressed right now. As everyone, I think, is aware, we did have our first annual Easter egg hunt here at Smith Park this past Saturday. First and foremost, I want to extend a huge thank you to Mr. Bridge, Ms. Eggleston, April Lowry, and the um, student Council and National Honor Society students that she was able to recruit to come help. I want to give a uh, shout out to Mr. Roadwald for making an appearance, supporting us on our less than perfect day. He didn't do any work, but he came out. I'm just saying. I was at work. He purpose. I, I think Dan purposely made it so that he got here after all the the work was done. Getting sure Saturday calendar. <laughs> So, um, as I'm sure a lot of people have heard or seen, um, the, the day was not without issues. Um, unfortunately, we were expecting another 10 to 15 volunteers that didn't come to fruition. Um, so, for anybody that was here or saw any of the pictures and knows exactly you know, how busy the park was, there were two of us. Um, do what? 
and I was in the bunny suit. So um, overall, you know, I, I did put out a pretty lengthy thing on um, some of the Facebook pages, just kind of, it, we're not trying to make excuses by any means. This is our first year doing it. We're new at all this. We've never done it before. Um, I didn't expect everything to go off without a hitch. But in the grand scheme of things, I do think it was a success. Um, so more to come. We're going to start planning, working on bigger and better events. Um, I'll run through the list really quickly. Mr. Kitko, we're done with those barricades. If you guys want to pick them up, thank you guys so much for dropping them off. Chief Trustee, we had three cases of bottled water left over. We would like to donate that to you and your crew if you would appreciate that. And I do also want to thank you for bringing the crew out and, uh, and, and having them present here. We, we were also fortunate. I don't think we needed you guys. Nobody, nobody got hurt or injured. So that's always a successful day in my book. But more to come. We're already starting to get things together for the 4th of July. Um, our next meeting um, is... April 27th at 7 p.m. here at the Shelter House. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is kind of recap what went well and what did not go so well for the Easter egg hunt. And then it sounds like we need to maybe talk about this, uh, is it CDBG? <laughs> Very good. The, the grant opportunity. Um, so that's all I've got. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't think I noticed like you had work for me to do. I, I was going to tell you thank you for what you guys did. It was I didn't get to make it. I had to work. I really wanted to be there. Uh, but don't beat yourself up over the hiccups. I mean, as I was telling Randy, we've done the festival for 18 years, and we still haven't got it right. So. <laughs> you know, I'll make like I said, everything, I have not, I've only seen two comments on Facebook for the board. And they weren't even negative, no, per they se. Weren't. It was just kind of like, Most people, yeah, this didn't really go so well. Well, but I think everybody was pretty happy overall. Yeah, and uh, for the apology post that I made, you know, I, I take full responsibility for the things that did go wrong because everybody was looking at me as 10 people here, and I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing other than wearing 22. Um, and you wore it well. You wore it so well. I know, um, they got really hot in the afternoon. But overall, I, I also want to, when we um, rambling, for the citizens that did come out and support them, Well, good job. But on your uh, apology, sure the your apology on Facebook, just yeah, about every comment was, we understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a lot. It was very, very positive. Hey, this is your first year. Don't give yourself a keep at it. Now. Yep. Thank you. 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 Nothing from Parks and Rec, they're not here tonight. Resolution's done, drop down to ordinances. <laughs> what? You just said nothing from I'm sorry, Charter Review. <laughs> Charter Review's not here, I'm sorry. Charter Review's not here. Parks and Rec are right there. Uh, ordinances, Ms. Burner. Ordinance, we have ordinance. Ms. Burner's not here either. 2022-14, <laughs> introduction tonight. Public hearing in action on May 2nd, 2022 and ordinance authorizing the city of new carlisle ohio to lease gastineau baseball field property of the city to the new carlisle diamondback diamondbacks adult baseball club um, other business looks like we have 2022 miami valley water compact information attached it says discussion mr mayor sir i attended a meeting I think it was last Wednesday, um, regarding the Tremont City Landfill. Um, the cleanup will be beginning. The uh, parties involved, the, the companies involved in leaving the waste there have agreed to a consent order. Um, a judge previously had ordered waste management to pay 49.5% of the cleanup costs. And there are seven other corporations that have signed off on it. Uh, the uh, consent decree has been sent to the federal court. Um, they expect the uh, federal court to approve it by the end of this year. Um, Dr. Patterson, the uh, health commissioner, said don't get your hopes up. This could take a while. Um, but uh, an attorney for chemical waste management said that uh, field studies should start as soon as 2024 
and then construction to remove the waste could begin in 2025. <coughs> they also, the uh, City of Springfield and Citizens for Clean Water have come up with the 2022 Miami Valley Water Contact, uh, Contract Compact because this is in the hands of the federal government. So they're going to need a little product. And that's what this is. You want me to read it? Oh, yeah. uh, that's nope. up to you. I, do, I did put a copy in the It's minute. in the thing. Okay. Um, I would propose we have a resolution uh, that the city of New Carlisle uh, sign off as a signatory to the uh, 2022 Miami Valley Water Con Compact. They are asking individuals, organizations, companies, corporations, and municipalities <clears throat> stand together because we all get our water from the same aquifer. And if uh, those barrels start leaking and those chemicals get into the water supply, we're sunk. So then I would make that an official motion. You per okay. That we sign off <coughs> that we have the city of New Carlisle as a signatory to the 2022 Miami Valley Water Compact. So, could we just take this right here and turn it into a resolution with the same language that started here, do you think? <coughs> or Springfield drafted a new, <coughs> Springfield, does Springfield draft anything we can copy? Do you know? Do what? I'm sorry. <coughs> that Spring, <laughs> I need one. Did Springfield already draft a resolution that we could copy, or is it can it can it just be this and on our resolution template? It could just be this on our resolution template. The uh, okay. city manager, you communicate with him quite a bit, Springfield. He told me that he would be sending us a uh, digital copy of this. Okay, got so, you. Yeah, anything you need to know about that, can, can I can reach out to Brian. Sure, sure. no problem. So we have a second. Okay. Mr. Cook was the second. All right. And the motion was that the city of New Carlisle sign off as the signatory of the 2022 Miami Valley Water. Oh. I'll get that right name. Via a resolution. Via a resolution. Via a resolution. All right. Ready. And my second was Cook. So, Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Roadwald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Vaughn. Yes. And Councilman Cook. Yes. That passes 6 0. All right. Let's see. Charter Review Commission, request review, edits, and suggestions. I thought they were coming tonight, but apparently not. Okay. Uh, other discussion. We do need a motion to excuse Mr. Lindsay. He was in an accident. No, no. He's doing all right. He's going all right. Just a little bump and bruise. So. Second was. I didn't hear it. Ben Paul. Peggy. Who was it? Peggy. I think we both. Okay. Well, we'll just go. <laughs> Councilman Roadwald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. That's accepted six zero. Right. Executive session done tonight. We need a motion to. Open discussion for city related matters. Yeah, I read that. Nobody said anything. Oh. Go did, ahead. I, did I miss my opportunity? Go to for say it. Something? It's all you. I also attended a uh, planning board meeting a couple weeks ago, and I was kind of surprised. I was not pleased with the way it went. Um, I don't think there's anybody in council has, that has dealt with annexations, and I don't think anybody in the planning board has dealt with annexations. Mr. Bridge, you have a degree in municipal management, is that correct? I have a master's in public administration. Okay. So you know about annexation? Um, I know. I've read about them, for sure. Um, I've never taken part of one, but they're pretty step-oriented. That's um, pretty easy to follow. Well, I would propose we have a joint meeting with the uh, planning board. Sure. And you, you involved just so we know what we're getting, uh, getting, uh, getting into here. Did I email council out those? You did. Yes. Okay, yeah. that's a great resource I found, and I'm gonna yeah. actually study those. And that flow chart is a step-by-step -step process. Um, but I would love that coordinate it with Mr. Hutchison to his planning board and, and get everyone on the board. On board. Um, so we'll, I'll get with Eric tomorrow and um, 
When's your next meeting, Hutch? Tomorrow. tomorrow. Oh, it's not going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> oh, sorry. This is your bicycle back. Remember those? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Um, so. Maybe we do at the next regular meeting, start at 6 maybe, and do like a 6 to 6.30. We're going to need more than that, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, what do you want to check with their schedules and stuff first on his end? Yeah, I'll give it Mr. Hutchinson tomorrow to get some of their dates. And then um, tell you what, I'm going to grab some dates from you guys as well. I'm just going to use the opposite dates of what we got for the joint meeting. So I know you guys have availability. So. We'll try to work around the four that I already have for that, and then we'll get with the planning board and try to coordinate something up. Okay. And if I can, the, you know, the planning board won't have anything to do with the annexation. So having a group meeting just about annexation with them, they don't make any decisions. I don't think it's, that's the point. The point is mm -hmm. to educate them about the steps and what we're going to expect in the process. Okay. Yeah, like yeah. Okay. Good? I'm good. Thank you. Any That's a great questions? idea. I'll start paying attention. Oh, I said it kind of fast. Not really. Anyone else? All right. Motion. So move. Uh, Mr. Vice Mayor, with your first. Second by Mr. Cook. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Rodwald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Vaughn. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Thank you.